Our scripture reading today is out of Psalm 107, uh, or 106, I mean, uh, verses 4 through 5. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to me with your salvation so that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice in the joy of your nation and boast about your heritage. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. That's one of the things that we want uh, for the Lord, too, is to remember us, is to know us, uh, is to be able to say that when we reach uh, our eternal heavenly home, that he says that we are good, faithful, and servants. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And uh, today, this morning, Denise has a great message of testimony of how the Holy Spirit uh, touched her heart, how God has uh, transformed her life, and she still is transforming, of course. But I pray and hope that her story and her testimony, as we say in the Baptist world, um, changes you and uh, encourages you to continue to write your story and also inspires you. Thank you. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, bless this time together. Bless this message and let the Holy Spirit fill us and open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear. Amen. Amen. I'd like to start out with my favorite scripture, which is John 20, 19 through 31. And as I stand here, I realize I'm wearing sunglasses, not my reading glasses. But I do have a large print Bible, so I think I'm okay. On the evening that was the first day of the week when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for the fear of Jews, Jesus came and was stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father said, has sent me I'm sending you and with that he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive anyone his sins they are forgiven if you do not forgive them they are not forgiven now Thomas one of the twelve was not there with the disciples when Jesus came so the other disciples told him we have seen the Lord but he said to them Unless I see the nails in his hands, in his finger, put my finger in where the nails were in his hand, I will not believe this. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many miracles and signs present with the disciples, which are not recorded here. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. That's my favorite scripture, my favorite story, because that is my faith. I have not seen, but I believe. And that's where my story begins. And I'm going to walk around here. And I'm going to sit down and try to tell my story. So, um, my 
the Doubting Thomas story is my favorite story. Um, I know Pastor said our stories not necessarily our background, but my background is part of my story, so I got to tell a little of it. I was raised Catholic. Um, I felt obligated to go to church. I believed in God. I thought there were angels, and I, I believed uh, guardian angels, and I believed in in the whole theory of Adam and Eve and God because I did go to religion in my Catholic church. So I did believe, but there was still that doubt. There was a little bit of doubt because I not seen anything tangible, nothing other than what I was taught and what I read. So my journey through the Catholic faith, making a, my communion and confirmation, and I, I understood what I was supposed to believe. But I still looked for signs and I still looked for things and never really noticed anything. So I came and went in church, I was uh, obligated to go as a Catholic, but then when I became an adult, I chose not to go to church. I chose to sleep in on Sundays. And then 31 years ago, January 1989, my mother at 46 years old, never sick a day in her life, fell ill with a brain aneurysm, was in a hospital for three months, and I had just found out I was pregnant with my son. I had just gotten married a couple years earlier. So all of a sudden, my wonderful life was crumbling around me. And I thought, I can't do this. I need my mother to raise my baby. And my mother's laying in a coma with a brain aneurysm. And they told us, just go about your business. She's got a 10% chance to live. And I never prayed so much in my life as I did in January of 1989. And my mother is here with us today, not only for my praying, but I'm sure my fathers and my brothers and my whole family. Because it wasn't time for mom to go. She needed to see me live and my son and daughter be born and celebrate her 77th birthday here with us today. Thank you, God. But that the 30 years ago, that brought me to Seneca United Methodist Church. That brought me to what is now New Hope. That was 30 years ago that I could not live my life on my own, just going about my business, believing what I read about God. I needed to see more. And when I walked through the doors of this church, because when I found out I was pregnant and my mother was in the hospital, I needed to find a church, and I knew I didn't want to go back to the Catholic church. So I went to a Presbyterian church, I went to a Lutheran church, and then I came here. And when I walked through those doors of this church right here, uh, 1989, I never looked back and never went anywhere else because the people here were the face of God. Every one of you, most of you were here back then, um, and if not, I've met you through and um, that is one of the reasons I do keep coming back to this church. Um, I found my faith here. I found loving people here to support me, that helped me raise my children, that helped me take care of my mother, who now lives with me. And coming to this church introduced me to the United Methodist Women. Now that's where my transformation really started. The United Methodist Women. Wow. I know you've heard me preach on that. Largest women's organization in the world. Over one million plus members. I am so proud to be a member of the United Methodist Women who deal with the oppression of women and children and when I was chosen by the women of this church that lifted me up to go to national seminar and this was in 2007 and I'm wearing a shirt um, it's got the logo on the front of it 
or I'm, not, I'm sorry, the logo that you're seeing here is on the back of my shirt. Stand up. And it says, for Christ's sake, turn the world upside down. Now, the United Methodist women do a lot of retreats. They do a lot of um, support and mission work. And I've told you all about their history. But National Seminar is something that has come out of, uh, that, that the United Methodist women have done. And I just want to tell you a little bit about their past seminars. I went to the 2007, which was, um, for Christ's sake, turn the world upside down. Some of their other themes were um, human rights, um, status for women, building the local church, economics, um, voices for all, a lot of justice, a lot of human rights, passionate, passionate themes that the women um, deal with. And when I was chosen to go to this seminar, it was because of my demographics, where I lived, my age, uh, my race. They tried to get a um, collective number of people to go down and learn from the United Methodist Women, and I chose public education. So this shirt that I made, I don't know if you can see over here, it says one, two, three. We all, uh, one of the first days of our seminar was um, making this t-shirt. And this was my one, two, three education. And then I have a peace sign and, and of course the flame and the cross. But we made t-shirts to wear around Nashville. I was sent to Nashville, Tennessee in August it was about 115 degrees and it was warm and it was hot and they were breaking record temperatures um, and there weren't many people out mostly everyone was in their air-conditioned homes but um, we stayed at the Scarrett Bennett Center I don't know if you've ever heard of the Scarrett Bennett Center it is owned by the um, Methodist Church and it, I think it used to be a college but it's a beautiful building and we stayed there and learned my subject to come back to teach to the United Methodist women in our area was public education. But when we were there, the United Methodist women don't just teach, they take action. If you've ever gone to an assembly, anytime the women gather, the women take action. They don't just take collection or just uh, knit blankets they take action. So I had my choice of going to three different action um, projects that were going on at the time. One of them was about immigrants. One of them was about uh, fair wages. And one of them was about injustice to homeless people. And that is the one that piqued my interest and I'm going to read you the story that brought me to that reason that I wanted to go stand outside in 114 degrees and protest about the injustices to homeless people because we were going to turn the world upside down I was to attend a vigil against violence for poverty in the memory of Tara Cole, who was murdered August 12, 2006. I was in Nashville August 12, 2007, one year later. The Nashville Homeless Project is an organization of homeless people confronting the root courses of poverty and oppression. They fight for human rights for poor people while striving for civil rights for people who remain on the street. They develop solutions through relationships with brothers and sisters and decision makers. What happened in 2006? A 32-year-old homeless woman who suffered from bipolar disorder was sleeping under a pier in a public park in Nashville where we all gathered that day. Two young men, college guys in their 20s, just looking for some fun, 
thought it would be fun to go harass some homeless people. So they went over and they kicked this poor woman sleeping. They kicked her into the Cumberland River where she drowned. Her coat and garment got tangled on some barriers down below. And this 32 year old woman with bipolar disease died and drowned because of the jokes uh, and fun of a couple of young guys who did this quite regularly, the police were told, in this Nashville area. The injustice to this woman was horrific. She had no chance. She had no chance to cry to God for help. She had no chance at all. So the United Methodist Women chose this as a project. And we went down there by the bus load. We took our umbrellas to protect us from the heat. We took water. We took wet towels to put compresses on because it was very, very hot. And we were going down to the Cumberland River in Nashville to send, put roses into the river and stand vigil with homeless people all over Nashville. So I, as a woman from Buffalo, not much seeing homeless people or, you know, I see them holding their sign every now and again and I kind of pass by them, don't want to make eye contact. These are the people Jesus wants us to help. These are the people that need our help. The other day I was driving and I was outside a shopping area and there was a man and his dog and he was holding a sign. And I put my car in park and I took out $20 and I got out of my car and ran it over to him. And I got back in my car and I never felt so good. He said, God bless you. And I said, no, God bless you. And I got back in my car, stopped traffic and left. And I was always afraid to do that. And now I do it every time I see someone. I reach in my wallet, five, 10, $20 to that person standing there. Because you don't know their story. You don't know why they're there or how they got there. But in Nashville, in 110 degrees, I gathered, I held hands with homeless people who I did not think twice to think how dirty or disgusting they may have looked. I held hands and sang amazing grace and threw roses in the river as a vigil to someone who lost their life because they were homeless and had bipolar disease and were a child of God and did not stand a chance. We need to stand up for these rights now we gathered, we held hands. I felt the presence of God like I never did before with these people in this connection, with homeless people that didn't look like any of us. They integrated with us, we formed circles, we prayed and we just prayed and, and it was just the most heartwarming experience and faithful experience and I felt overcome with love and compassion for the needy at that point. And we all shared our water and different things. And as we gathered to get on that bus, to go back, waiting for that bus, a woman looked at me and said, did you see the man in the blue shirt and the blue cap? And I said, I, I don't know, I saw a lot of people. She was the homeless man with the blue cap. And I go, hmm? no, I said, I, I was standing next to a lady with the red shirt and a lady with the brown shirt and tattered clothes. And, and she goes, he was there and I was holding his hand. And she said, I asked him if he wanted water. And he said, yes. And I reached out and gave him my water. And then I reached out and get, got the water for me, and he was gone. She said the man was standing next to me that I gave a bottle of water to, and he vanished. You know who that man was, right? 
You know what you do for the least of my brothers. You do for me. I believe Jesus was amongst us. I believe Jesus was with us. I felt Jesus with me. I have felt nothing but compassion for homeless, for the poor, for the needy, like none, none other in 2007, in August, when I was in Nashville with United Methodist Women and the homeless people there. So if my ushers on cue, this is cue, could pass out, and I'm gonna start reading this because I, I, I always did like to write poems, but I wrote this and it's kind of a song. I actually told Jerry I wanted him to write a song, to, <laughs> lyrics to this. But I wrote this, I was compelled after my, um, after my visit to Nashville, after my experiences with the United Methodist Women, after my experiences at New Hope Church, after my reading the Bible and my faith journey, I say this to you, there is no doubt. Have you seen the Lord? Have you seen the Lord, the risen Lord? Have you heard the news? the greatest news. Our Savior is alive, so the disciples have said, but those who saw him crucified say he's dead. There are some that will always have doubt, but while others want to just scream and shout, what can this great news be all about? Our world full of problems, famine and drought. God sent his only son to help us all out. Remember the many lessons and stories Jesus told. The words of wisdom for young and old. My peace be with you, Jesus always said. Let the Holy Spirit fill you as Jesus led. The disciples are the witnesses who have seen and believe. Now it is our turn to be open and receive. So let us try now with comfort and relief trusting without any doubt of God's love, faith, and peace. I wrote this, I believe this, I want you to have a copy of this. This is a page of my story, because life is full of illusions. Life is an illusion. Things you think that are, aren't. Things can be transformed. What you see may not be what you believe, but what you believe is what you should read in your Bible and learn from Scripture. So for Christ's sake, turn the world upside down. Amen. We'll take the offering at this time. If you're at home and want to mail in your offering, it's 2846 Seneca Street for New Hope members and 539 Main Street for Covenant. We appreciate your support as we have a lot of mission work to do here. Amen.
let us pray for the offering. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for all that you've done for us in our lives, Lord. And now we just ask that you give us the wisdom to be able to know what to do with your uh, gifts and offerings, Lord, that have been lifted up to you. Lord, help us to discern uh, what to do for missions and, and how to give back to the community, Lord, and how to be the face of God within the community. And in your name, amen. Let us stand and sing the last song, I Love to Tell the Story. and this written story is your core is what you can be the face of God and how you can be the face of God is getting to know your own story so that way you can help transform lives 
and help be a part of the social injustices that we are experiencing today in the world, especially with the homeless. So please, please, please be in prayer for your story and read your Bible. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the Lord bless you this week. May His face shine upon you. May His face uh, be His countenance to you. And may His peace go along with you this week. Amen. Thank you.